Hi everyone, welcome to uh, TV tutorial. Uh, I'm Yalungu FI. Uh, today I will be doing engineering science M3. So the topic that I will be busy with is heat. Uh, so under heat, we'll be looking at the uh, calculations on the heat energy gained by a substance and heat energy lost by a substance. We are going to also take into consideration the specific capacity of different uh, substances. And then we are going to move on and also talk about efficiency, um, how to calculate the efficiency of, 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 of uh, a, a substance. Right, so today we'll be discussing uh, the relationship between heat and temperature. Right, so what is it that we know about this relationship? Um, what we know is that uh, if you are going to add heat on a substance, the temperature will rise. If you are going to um, subtract heat energy on a substance, the temperature will drop. So that's what we know, right? So if let's say, for example, we have two substances, right? Uh, maybe a steel ball, right? Uh, maybe at uh, 90 degrees Celsius. Right, so it's a steel ball at 90 degrees Celsius, and then we have uh, a container of, of water, right, at maybe the initial temperature there at 30 degrees Celsius, right. So if you take the steel ball, you put it inside the container. Of water what will happen is heat energy I mean the transfer of heat will take place right so now this transfer of heat will be from uh, the steel ball because it has a high temperature compared to water so the steel ball will have to transfer its heat to the water so basically what is happening here is that the steel ball is going to lose heat energy, right? Because we are using it to heat up the water. Now, the water, it is going to gain uh, heat energy that is lost by the steel ball, right? So, as it happens, what we have to know is that if the initial temperature of the steel ball, remember, we are heating the water using the steel ball, so, this steel ball will use, uh, sorry, will lose uh, heat energy and therefore the temperature will drop. So it means that the temperature will drop from 90 to an unknown temperature, which we call the final temperature. We can call this what? T2. So if you are going to compare the initial temperature and the final temperature, you will then realize that the final temperature T2 is less than the initial temperature, right? Because we are saying that the steel ball, it is going to lose heat energy and therefore the temperature will drop. So the change in temperature for the steel ball or for this substance that is losing heat energy will be given by the equation. We are going to write this as T1 because T1 is greater than T2 because the steel ball is losing, I mean, heat energy and therefore the temperature drops. So it will be T1 minus T2. Right, so here, what we're trying to do here is that we, we do not want a situation where we subtract uh, a bigger number from a smaller number, right? Uh, if we do that, it will mess up our magnitudes, right? As we calculate the heat energy for uh, more especially uh, if you have to equate, I mean, the heat energy lost by uh, substance A is equal to the heat energy gained by substance B, right? So if you have to equate the two equations, then it will give us problems if you don't get this change in temperature correct. So it will be T1 minus T2, right? So we are using the steel ball to heat up the water, right? 
So basically what will happen here is that the temperature of water will have to rise from this magnitude theta. So you will have T2, right? Your T2 is uh, the final temperature. So when you compare the two, you will then see that T2 is greater than T1. So the change in temperature can be calculated as T2 minus T1, right? So let's check. We say the steel board is losing heat. So the change in temperature is the initial temperature minus the final temperature for the substance that is, lo is losing heat. Now for the substance that is gaining heat, it's final temperature minus initial temperature, right? So now we can now calculate what we call the heat lost by the steel ball, right? Because we know it's losing heat. So the heat lost will be equal to the equation, you know, the mass of the steel ball multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the steel ball multiplied by the change in temperature of which we already know that the change in temperature is equal to the difference between the uh, the final temperature and the initial temperature, right? So that's what we have. And we know that now the water is going to gain. So the heat energy gained by the water, heat gained, is equal to M, which represents the mass of, of water or the liters of water multiplied by specific heat capacity of water multiplied by the change in temperature right so we can see the change in temperature that is given as t2 minus t1 for water which is the substance that is gaining heat energy right so now these are the equations that you can use to calculate the heat energy gained by a substance or the heat energy gained by Sorry, the heat lost by a substance. Right. So, what you must know is that heat energy or the measure's energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one substance to another. Right. So that is the conversation of heat energy. You cannot create energy, you cannot destroy it, right? You can change it from one form to another, or you can transfer it from one substance to, to another. So if it comes to a push, let's say for example, you're asked to calculate maybe the final temperature or the initial temperature of the substances, or maybe the mass or the specific heat capacity, right? Or the heat energy loss or the heat energy gain, Right, so you might find that you have to equate the two to say the heat energy lost by substance A is equal to the heat energy gained by substance B. Right, this is according to the composition of heat energy. Right, so another thing that I would like us to talk about here is the temperature, the final temperature. So we say that if you are going to take the steel ball and put it inside the water. There will be heat transfer between the two because they have different temperatures. So heat transfer will only take place if the two substances have different temperatures, right? So now this heat transfer, we say it is from the substance with a high temperature to a substance with a low temperature. Now this heat transfer will continue up until these two substances, I'm talking about the steel board and the water, up until the two substances have the same temperature. Right, so we talked about the final temperature of the steel ball and the final temperature of the water. So we say the heat transfer will continue up until the two substances have the same temperature. It means that the T2 for the water will be equal to the T2 for the steel wall. So you must know at all times the finite temperature will be 
the same. So if you are given the final temperature of water and you use the steel to heat the water up, you must know that the final temperature of the steel is also the one that you are given for water. So that's what is important, right? If you have the final temperature for steel, you already have that on there, right? <clears throat> so when it comes to the specific capacity, uh, different substances have different specific capacity, right? So the masses, there is no problem right there. So this is the change in temperature. So if you heat water from two, from two, right? So that is the initial temperature and your final temperature. So another thing that you need to know, because I don't want you to be confused when you are given maybe, because when we talk about the change in temperature is equal to maybe T2 minus T1 for the substance that is gaining heat, right? That is the equation for the final, for the change in temperature, right? So you must know if you are given, maybe for example, <coughs> there, you have this one, the change in temperature in degrees, you also have T2 in degrees, you also have T1 in degrees. So if you are given, maybe for example, a statement, you are given a question, right, to say, calculate the heat energy, you must know that, okay, this temperature that we are given, is it a change in temperature? Is it the final temperature? It is the initial temperature. You must be able to identify the initial temperature the final temperature and the change in temperature when you read this thing. Thank you for joining us on this first part of our lesson. Let's meet again on the second part of our lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.